A few people have been asking me about how to set up the aerodynamics of a car in Assetto Corsa Competizione, so I thought I'd make a quick video to explain what you need to look out for and how it works. We'll use the safe setup, the safe setup preset as our starting point, but feel free to use any setup you like as your starting point. The most important thing in the aero screen is the front aero variation statistic at the bottom of the screen. This tells you the current aerodynamic balance of the car. If this number is positive, then the front end of the car will have more downforce than the rear, which will make your turn in response better and give you less understeer throughout the corner. But too much of this could lead to less stability at the rear of the car and could make you spin. A negative value means that more aerodynamic load is on the rear of the car and this will cause the rear end to be much more stable but could cause understeer. The key is to find a balance that you're happy with. In other words, how much understeer and how much oversteer are you happy with? Once you've found a balance that you're happy with, whenever you make any adjustments, you want to keep this number roughly the same to achieve the same balance. So one question you might ask is, if I've found a balance that I'm happy with, why would I want to make any, any adjustments to the aerodynamics? Well, even if you've found a balance that you're really happy with, you still need to tailor your aerodynamic load to the circuit that you're currently racing on. For example, if we're racing around Monza, we'd want to reduce our drag as much as possible, so we can get a better speed on the straights. If we're at Monaco, we'd want to add as much downforce as possible, so we can go faster around the corners. The important question is, how do we make these changes without changing the balance of the car? Let's explain this with a practical example. We'll pretend that we're racing around Monza, so we want to reduce the amount of drag as much as possible. So let's reduce that rear wing. So here we're going from 7 down to 1. But look, it's changed the aero variation. Now we've got way more downforce on the front of the car than the rear. So it was 0.5% and now it's gone up to 5.1%. So this is a, 10, a, ten, a factor of 10 change. So we want to change the aero load so we're at 0.5. If we had a splitter at the front of the car, we'd, we could just reduce the angle of that until we've got the balance we desire. Unfortunately, this car doesn't have one. So does that mean we're stuck with poor balance? No, it doesn't. By adjusting the ride height, we can adjust the angle of the car, in effect making the entire car into a giant wing. This is called a rake angle. By having the front of the car lower than the rear of the car, more air will flow over the top of the car and push it into the ground. As you can see, if we decrease the front ride height, it will increase the front aero variation. So if we go down like that, we can see the front aero variation increases. But we want to decrease it back down to 0.5%. So let's increase the front ride height until we've got to where we want to be. So if we go up here, we're aiming for 0.5%. And now we've got to a point where, oh look, at 66 millimeters, we've got 1.3%. And at 67 millimeters, we've got 0.2%. So what we can do, we can also play around with the rear ride height until it is about where we want. So we've decreased the downforce whilst maintaining the balance of the car. Are we finished? Not quite. There's another trick we can use to increase our top speed. If we lower the car as much as possible, it will decrease the drag profile of the car. So let's reduce the ride height as much as we can whilst keeping the balance the same. So roughly, if this difference between the two ends of the car is about the same, the aero variation will be about the same. So if we were to decrease these one at a time, but you can see it's differed straight away. So what we'll do, we'll just crank this all the way down to the bottom and we'll do the same with this. And then we'll tweak it and now you can see the front end's too low. So we'll just tweak this until we get to about 0 0.5. And there we go, bingo. So. If we were running a Monza, that would be about where we want the car to be. Right, so now we're done. So hopefully 
this is starting to make some sense to you. I'll show you one more example just to make sure. We'll now pretend that we're driving at Monaco, so we want as much downforce as possible so we've got more grip in the corners. First we'll increase the rear wing as much as possible, but as you can see this has changed our front arrow variation so it's negative. Has that gone up to the top? Yes it has. What does this mean? Well, it means there's more downforce on the rear of the car than the front. What will that do to the balance of the car? It means you'll struggle to turn into corners and you'll probably get quite a bit of understeer. So how do we fix it? By changing the rake of the car. So we need to lower the front of the car and raise the rear of the car to correct this aerodynamic balance. So if we lower the front ride height and we wanted to get to 0 0.5, so you see we've got this middle thing again. So we could leave it on zero and raise the rear just a tad. And there, we're about where we want to be. So, are we done? <laughs> the balance of the force has been restored. Are we finished? Well, we should continue. We should consider if the ride height is appropriate for the track that we're on. We're at Monaco. So the ride height will need increasing so that we can ride the kerbs. So let's increase the front and rear ride height whilst maintaining the balance. So we basically want to go fairly high. Let's pretend we want to go as high as possible, which we probably don't want to. But just to illustrate the point. So we've put the rear as, as high as it'll go. And then we need to adjust the front until we get to where we want. So again, we've got to this middle point. So we probably want to go a little bit under, oh, hang about, a little bit over, sorry, decrease the rear a tiny bit and get to 0.5, so there we're at a balance. If we wanted to go somewhere, let's say, halfway up the ride height, this, you just play with these numbers, wherever the ride height is that you want, and there you go, we're at about, we want to get to 0.5, bam. That'll do quite nicely. So, we've covered the balance of the car, how important the front error variation is, and its relationship with understeer and oversteer. We've covered the ride height and rake angle of the car. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I hope you found this video useful. Please consider liking and subscribing for more videos like this.